35 Swedish Valent Facts Every Owner Should Know Number 1. Swedish Valuns are medium-sized herding dogs known for their distinctive, compact build and short legs. Originating from Sweden, they were historically used for herding and guarding livestock. These herding dogs are known for their spirited and alert nature, and they also make loyal companions. Number 2. Swedish Valuns have a fascinating history that goes back to the 8th or 9th century, during the fierce Viking era. In those times, these dogs were revered as Viking Arnas Hund, symbolizing the faithful companions of the formidable Vikings. Number 3. The Viking owners, beyond the traditional warrior image, were also diligent farmers. They relied on various Spitz-type dog breeds, evident from archaeological discoveries. They used Swedish Valuns mainly for herding, ratting, and guard duties. Number 4. Large dogs of this Spitz type have been found buried with their masters in Stone Age settlements in Scandinavia. The skeleton of Swedish Valund has been found to be remarkably similar to that of the modern Norwegian Elkhound, another Spitz type dog breed. Number 5. As its name suggests, the Norwegian Elkhound, larger than the Swedish Valund, was historically used by Vikings for elk hunting. Unlike Valunds, which worked as herding dogs, both breeds have a common Spitz ancestry. Despite their shared region of origin, they evolved into distinct breeds, each with unique traits and purposes. Number 6. Did you know that the Swedish Valhund is also known as the Wolf Corgi? Yep, these guys resemble the Welsh Corgi in many ways, including their elongated and rectangular body shape and short legs. However, the Valhund is taller on average compared to Corgis, has longer legs, and is not as stocky. Number 7. The Valund also has a lovely wolf-like color palette and can have any length of tail from a stubby nub to a long, brush-like spitz plume. Number 8. The Valund was bred in Sweden and distributed throughout Europe, while the Corgi was originally bred in the Welsh countryside. Number 9. The resemblance between these two breeds is strong enough to suggest that the two breeds must have crossbred in the past, and that's not unreasonable since the Vikings ranged far and wide and are known to have gone to Wales too. Number 10. Exactly when and where the breed was developed is unknown, but historians say that Vikings might have brought Swedish Valens to Wales or taken Welsh Corgis to Sweden and then interbred them. This could very much explain the similarities between the two breeds. Number 11. Separately, some historians like Clifford Hubbard believe the Swedish Valand to be the older one among the two breeds and is thought to have played a part in the development of the modern Welsh Corgi. Number 12. There is also a theory suggesting that the Swedish Valand may have originated from the crossbreeding of Welsh Corgis and Scandinavian Spitz dogs during the Viking raids of Britain between the 8th and 11th centuries. Number 13. The Viking culture died out, but the Viking dogs did not. Later referred to as Valens, meaning herding dogs in English-speaking countries, they continue to work on farms as drovers and herders of cows, but the number of these dogs have been known to decline over time. Number 14. In 1942, the Swedish Valand breed was close to extinction. Bayern von Rosen remembered the Swedish Valand from his childhood and joined the effort to save the old Swedish breeds. He placed an ad seeking information about these dogs, and KG Zetterstein responded. Together, they formed a partnership to rescue the breed. The men scoured the country for the best breed specimens and started with one male named Mopsen and three females named Vivi, Lessie, and Topsy, and were successful in their venture. Number 15. In 1943, after a year of showcasing the breed in exhibitions, the Swedish Kennel Club formally acknowledged the Swedish Valhund as a distinct breed. Number 16. During the same time, Sweden officially recognized the Swedish Valhund as a native breed and honored it as the national breed of the country. Number 17. In 1964, following a revision of the Swedish standard, the breed was renamed Västgötas Pests, derived from the Swedish province Västergötland, where the revitalized breeding program originated. Number 18. Since then, the Swedish Valand has gained recognition and has been bred in over 10 countries, making them more and more popular. People adore this dog for its great herding skills, cleverness, and ideal size, making it a beloved pet all around the world. Number 19. The popularity of Swedish Valand has been quite evident for quite some time now, as they have been featured on a remarkable number of postage stamps, including those from Tajikistan, Mali, Nicaragua, Ukraine, Russia, and of course, Sweden. Number 20. In 1974, the first Swedish Valand came to England. Miss Nikki Gascoigne helped set up the Breed Society in 1980. The breed earned championship status, indicating its recognition and acceptance within the dog breeding community from the Kennel Club in the UK in 1985. 
Number 21. Marilyn Thell from Cranston, Rhode Island, was the first person to bring and breed Swedish Fallons in the United States during the 1980s. All credit for the establishment and promotion of the breed in the US goes to Marilyn Thell. She is credited with founding the original Swedish Fallon Club in 1987. Number 22. The shoulder height for male Swedish Fallons ranges from 12.5 to 13.5 inches, while for females, it's 11.5 to 12.5 inches. Number 23. The Swedish Fallons typically weigh between 20 and 30 pounds, making them smaller than average sized canines. But despite their small size, they exhibit considerable strength with well defined muscles and a sturdy build. Number 24. According to the AKC standard for the breed, more important than the exact height is the proportion of the dog's body. The height compared to the length of the body measured from the front chest to the back buttocks should maintain a ratio of 2 is to 3. Number 25. The Swedish Valen joined the American Kennel Club in 2005, becoming the 156th breed recognized by the AKC. Number 26. The FCI standard describes Swedish Fallons as watchful, alert, and energetic. They are spirited and athletic, yet steady and dependable. A true example of a big dog with short legs. Number 27. Swedish Fallons boast various tail types, from natural bobtails and partial tails to long tails. Interestingly, some are born with naturally short tails, while others may have longer tails or even a tail that is partially natural and shortened. Number 28. The variation in tail types among Swedish Valens is due to genetic factors. Some Valens inherit a natural bobtail gene, which results in a short or total absence of a tail. Others may have a longer tail, and in some cases, tails might be docked or surgically shortened for historical or practical reasons. The diverse genetics and breeding decisions play a key role in the various tail types seen in Swedish Valens. Number 29. Swedish Falhens can have gray to red colors in a sable pattern. Lighter shades on certain body parts are preferred, and a distinct mask with lighter hair around the eyes, muzzle, and throat is desired. Number 30. A fluffy coat, any color not mentioned in the standard, a nose that isn't mostly black, more than one-third white, and any bite other than scissors are considered disqualifications according to the AKC breed standard. Number 31. Swedish Fallons have a natural herding instinct, showing a preference for keeping their family and other pets close. They might use gentle poking or nipping to gather everyone together, reflecting their historical role in herding livestock. Number 32. Swedish Fallons are known for their unique vocalizations, including sharp and distinctive barks. This trait stems from their historical use of sharp barks to help control livestock, showcasing their watchful and alert nature. Number 33. Finding Swedish Fallons in the United States can be a challenge, and they often come with a higher price tag, typically ranging from $1,000 to $2,500. Number 34. Swedish Fallons are quite susceptible to retinopathy. Retinopathy is a hereditary eye disease where cells of the retina are damaged. The damage of these retinal cells causes changes in the dog's vision and may lead to the complete loss of their eyesight. Number 35. Swedish Fallons can also develop progressive retinal atrophy. This disease affects the cells at the back of the eye, leading to vision problems. Progressive retinal atrophy can vary in severity, ranging from night blindness to complete blindness, and it's observed in up to 10% of screened Swedish Fallons. Alright guys, now which among these Swedish Fallon facts surprised you the most? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.